Amen. Amen. I think some Sunday afternoon, you know, we ought to just come up and let Ann play while we all just listen to all that wonderful stuff she can play. After we get the piano tuned. No, it just needs tuning. It's an old Chinese custom, tuning. Uh, that's good. Jason, I knew I liked you. Uh, a couple of announcements, I think. Uh, the first one uh, is that the pumpkin patch is still open, or not right now, but it will be after lunch, around 2 or whenever we get back from eating lunch. And uh, Yesterday we got a call from our neighbor at about 5.45 in the morning, and he said, your canopy has blown down the street. And uh, sure enough, it had. It was down almost to Spencer in the ditch. But we, you know, when, when we usually, when we put it up, we have screwed the legs on. And if we would have done that, it would have totaled it. But since we didn't, it was just this big thing spinning along. And uh, so I told the neighbor I was going to run down here. I'd get some help, and we'd be here about 9 o'clock. Well, I got here at 9 o'clock. And he already had it set up. Oh, and I don't know how in the world he did that, and that went by himself. But uh, So if you happen to see him out mowing his grass or walking his dog, yell thank you, because it was a good thing. Uh, on Saturday night, we have a group of people that, that y'all don't, some of y'all don't know, but Joe Romero is uh, Deborah Dionisio's dad. And so for years, I thought we needed some kind of a presence out there on Holly Street you know there's a carport and it has a brick wall and uh, so i asked joe one day he does a lot of woodwork and i really didn't expect what we ended up getting because this is exactly according to if you'll notice that the flame is closer on the bottom than on the top the flame sticks down further than the cross there the crosses are properly angled this is exactly the right logo for the united methodist church and so uh we're he's we're going to mount this on that wall and so we'll have some presents going out that way. And don't, they, don't you think it did a great job? Yes. Right. Yes. And, uh, so I'm, I'm really happy about that. It uh, smells really good, too, because it's all fresh paint. <laughs> it's dry. And uh, let's see, I think, uh, oh, so the, the, the Administrative Council met this week. And uh, we are now pursuing I think that's the right word. We're pursuing the notion of tearing down the fellowship hall uh, and working on our uh, food service area here in the church all kind of simultaneously. So this coming week, there should be a plumber by to give us bids on that part, and I'm working to get bids on the, from demolition people. Uh, one of the questions we had was, what does the district and the conference have to say about it? And I got clearance. Uh, we don't need a charge conference. We don't need anything except for the trustees to approve it when we get ready to do it. And then, of course, the money to pay for it. Um, so we're moving forward on that. And uh, so one of these days, pretty soon, you'll actually have a nice view out the windows of maybe pretty plants, a garden, or something other than what we have right now. Anne will be so glad not to be looking at the side because the sun shines right off the side of that building and uh, she can't see me and that, that's horrible. Um, <laughs> let's see, I don't think I have anything else. I, uh, we do need, if you're out, I'm going to say this every day until the pumpkin patch is over. Every, if you're out and around, drive by and check on who's there, say hi, because when you're there for a few you know, hours by yourself, uh, it's nice to have company for a little bit. And uh, to, oh, I know, I know, I know, I forgot that. Two days, I know. Anyway, if you're out and around in, in this part of town, and just drive by and say hi. Uh, you know, we open about 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. It's no big deal one way or the other, but we don't sell many pumpkins at 2. Yes, Sue? I was going to say the food pantry, number one, and, and was last night Christmas. Back. Chris is not back. He was here. He was here. There's he a difference. Good, he looks great. <laughs> but Chris Proctor was back singing with the group last night, but he's still not able to play the guitar much. Uh, so being here and being back are not necessarily the same. 
the uh, owner is good. Yeah, right? oh, it, was, it was good to see him. It really was. I had lunch with him a week or so ago, and Francisco reached out to him, so we're working hard to get him back. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Al Martin is still is in the hospital. Yeah, Al Martin, if y'all know those of you remember Al Martin, he had fell and hurt his leg, he's in the hospital, they're trying to decide if he's got, I don't guess they've decided yet. No, he's on IVs and they're going to hope to put him on his pills tomorrow. Yeah, they don't, they were treating him for sepsis, they don't know, but he, he messed his leg up pretty good. Uh, I talked to Cindy and she's, she said, we're fine, he's just, it's just this thing we're going through. Now, uh, you know, we have a couple, we have a lot of couples here. You got some else? Is that you back there? Yeah, what about, I didn't know what you said. Oh, no, I just said, were you, were you saying Jack again? No. Oh, okay. I have my hearing aids turned forward, so. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have this couple in our church that's been married for almost 59 years. In fact, in two days, they'll be married for 59 years. And so, as it works out, Bill Nash invited our church to have a foursome in the golf tournament that he does every year as a fundraiser. So uh, I'm taking Ron with me to the golf tournament tomorrow so that he will make, he won't do anything to upset the apple cart, he will make it to Tuesday when they have their 59th anniversary. Ron and Maxine, with 59 years old. It's um, tough. Well, if he had to stay home all day tomorrow, you might not make it. <laughs> uh, but that is a milestone, you know, and uh, and I think we should always recognize that. Um, the uh, I don't think there's anything else. This afternoon is the district conference for the district. Uh, it's some ungodly hour, three o'clock, uh, six o'clock, something. Anyway, we have to vote on the district budget. But Faye is our uh, district treasurer for the district and so she helps us be connectional in all the things we do. I have nothing else to offer for the good of anything right now except to turn to Jesus and God and the Bible and uh, Anne would you play something for us to warm our hearts.
there was another verse so we did the same. Our scripture reading this morning, our first one comes from Hebrews in the fifth chapter. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He's able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You're my son, today I have begotten you. You're a priest forever, as he says, also in another place, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of the flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God, a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. Friends, as you're able, uh, please stand as we affirm our faith this morning with the, uh, the uh, Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. sing freely, freely, and then we'll pray together.
Gracious God, we God, we come to church to see our friends. We come to have our lives centered. We come to be redirected. And we come to pray. God, we have a long list of things we'd like in our prayers. We'd love to see some of our old friends back, our chairs more full for worship. We'd love to see some of our friends that have been sick, receiving miraculous cures, We'd like to see a revival of your spirit in our community and in our country. God, our list is long. We have a lot of wants. And today, as we gather in this group, we confess that we haven't spent much time being grateful. Grateful that we have a church that is here for us to come to, a community where it's safe and allowed for us to travel to worship. Hospitals and doctors and physicians and nurses that provide medications that do bring about healing. and maybe the safest and best country in the world to live in. Forgive us when we're more about want than about thanks. Give us grace and mercy as we attempt to become closer to you so that we can more appreciate the power that you have to change the world. Forgive us when we put our thoughts and powers in the wrong direction. We admit that we have lost our focus. So today as we sing and as we pray, Help us to be grateful. Grateful for every day, every handshake, every hug. Because you've given this great day, these great friends, this church and this community and this country to us. Forgive us when we don't take care of it and strengthen us to be your people in the midst of a hurting and chaotic world. You know, Jesus lived in that same kind of world. Politicians didn't like him. The government was unsure. And he persevered doing the Father's will, even to death on a cross. So it's no wonder that we, like the disciples, look to Jesus and say, Jesus, how do we pray? And he said, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Please. Temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Well, in a few minutes, we'll be hearing from the Gospel of Mark. It is, uh, we will be asking you to stand for the reading of the Gospel if you can. And so, Amazing Grace is not a very long song. So, uh, let's just, if as you're able, let's stand and sing Amazing Grace. <coughs> John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him, being Jesus, and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right, and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Are we baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? They replied, we are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. The baptism with which I'm baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit in my right hand or my left is not mine to grant. But it's for those 
whom it had been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to get angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them. And their great ones are tyrants over them. But it's not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And to give his life a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And you may be seated. You know, last week we talked about the, what we call the young rich ruler, the young man that went up to Jesus and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said, oh, it's simple. Just go by all the Ten Commandments. And then he said, oh, I've done all that. And today, this isn't a, a bystander or a citizen. This is the disciples, two of them, the main guys, Jesus' allies. And they get into an argument about who's going to sit on the right or the left in heaven. You'd have been mad too if you'd have been one of the ten. I'm kind of mad about it right now. <laughs> but you know, that's the world we live in right now. It's about tyrants and powers. Who's in charge? Amen. And we hear it everywhere. I mean, it, I'm not just talking about politics either. I'm talking about companies, everything. And so it seems like the people that want to be served suddenly enjoy being served. I don't know if any of y'all watch Blue Bloods, but uh, had a pretty good one the other night. And uh, Tom Selleck, you know, he's gotten a lot older since he was magnum in the old days but uh, anyway Tom Selleck is on there and they offer him a job instead of police commissioner in, in New York he's going to get to be the NFL security director for the National Football League and he's a big football fan and it's going to pay more money than he makes and he's not going to have to move and he's not going to have to do deal with a mayor that he doesn't agree with well he would have had 32 owners to deal with but that's a different issue and his buddy is over there trying to talk him into it. He said, it's a seven-figure salary. And he makes what I think is a brilliant observation. He said, for those people who that seven-figure salary is important, they will never have enough. Amen. And he said, I've got something that the seven figures doesn't give me, and that's enough. And I think we all have enough, really. There's not anyone in this room right now that's suffering. I mean, you'll get to have some lunch later and probably have a TV set at home if you want one. And, and you have a car to get where you're going to go, probably. Or somebody to take. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we don't have enough. And I get what he's saying because it's true of the church, too. You know, we have a really nice church a nice building. We don't have any debt. We've got some people. But it's not very often that I get into a meeting with the church people on the board or other people when it's like, you know, we need more people. Well, we do. Or maybe we have enough. Now, I think that's part of the thing that Jesus is trying to say here when he says the difference in being served and serving. And so I titled this message today, Humility of Service, because there is something humble about it when you do it with the right heart. I was here the other day at the pumpkin patch when it began to rain and so we came up under the shed here to be dry and there was a couple of guys and a gal came walking by and they wanted to get out of the rain and so we had an interesting conversation with them for you know 10-15 minutes but it was real conversation. I don't know that they're homeless, but they're close. A little later, we watched them get dinner out of the food box. 
We had a real conversation with them. Because, you know, they're real people. And the truth is, friends, except for maybe some decisions that we were able to make, they didn't make, by the grace of God, there go we. And if we get really honest about it, we all know that. We know that we didn't make some decisions. At some point, we didn't do some stuff. Or maybe some of us did, but then we finally changed. We have, there's no room for judgment. As we talked about that experience of having talked with them, somebody rode by on a bike and the comment was made, boy, wouldn't it be awful for your bike to be the only transportation you had? And I said, well, those other guys were walking. And <laughs> you see how easy it is to get into a place where we think one's better than the other. We're not better than them. Whoever them is. Yesterday we were out in the patch and I was one of my favorite speeches. If you haven't watched this speech in a long time, you should go watch it. It's, uh, it's uh, Spencer Tracy in, in the, in the in nearly the end of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. If you know the story, it's about Sidney Poitier and uh, I don't remember the actress's name, but it's, uh, this is way back, way back. I mean, this, when this happened, it was a very irregular event for a white girl to marry a black guy and she went home to tell her dad Spencer Tracy about it and in this eight minute speech he, he, he just spills his guts right out and he and the father of the man they're neither one are happy about this situation Audrey Hepburn on the other side she's taking the high road it's her daughter and they get into this argument. The two men are telling both the son and the daughter why they shouldn't do what they do. And finally, Spencer Tracy comes to this awareness because he's confronted. And finally, he gets to the end of it and he said, you're going to have a hard life. There's going to be a lot of difficulties, but none of them will be for me because if you feel even half as much towards your, my daughter as I feel toward my wife when we fell in love and got married, that's what's important. If you haven't watched that movie in a long time, you ought to watch it. You ought to watch Giant, too. It's a great movie. Mm -hmm. Don't spend a lot of time on Fandango. <laughs> I'm just, you know, that's your tip for the week. But I think so many times we fall into the same trap as the disciples. If I just do this right, if I just put the right amount in the offering plate, if I just contribute the right number of minutes at the church, if I just do the, if I'm seen doing the right thing, then I have a better chance to be in the right place with God. And God couldn't care less about that. God's looking inside your heart and He knows who you really are and what you really think. And He knew what was going on with these disciples. It just seems to me that the notion of serving seems low sometimes. Sometimes we think less of those people in the service industry. Sometimes we think less of those people waiting on you at the restaurant. Sometimes we think less of the guys that pick up our trash. I don't know if y'all do. I do sometimes. You know how what a mess we'd have if we didn't have the trash people? I mean, somebody's got to do that job. We ought to be giving them Christmas presents and hugging them when we get a chance. You might want to wear a white suit, but maybe most. <laughs> they like water bottles. They like water bottles. Good job. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 but we ought to be thankful for them, what they do. And we ought to get away from some of this stuff we're living through right now where it's about judgment. I heard this the other day. This is probably a true statement. Invite all of your loved ones over to the house for Thanksgiving. Talk about politics and you'll have to buy less Christmas presents this year. <laughs> I mean, really, can families really, really split up because of that? But it's happening. Do you think God's okay with that? No. So somebody's got to be different, right? Yep. 
Somebody's got to start a new trend. And you know, even those guys stand on the side of the road that are trying to collect money, you know, they said, you know, I'm homeless or whatever. I'm really a bottle of water doesn't cost much. We are so often ready to say, and, and let me tell you, I was right there on board. When we put this food box out there a year and a half ago, uh, we, we glued it down. <laughs> but we were reasonably certain it wouldn't be there by Monday. And now I think there's a number of people that absolutely depend on it for something. And we don't put enough in there to feed four families all the time. So, I mean, it's, it's just helping them. I think when we get to be seen as a church that serves, not a church that wants to be served, God smiles on us and good things happen. And we've done a lot of that. We got Angel Tree coming up after Thanksgiving where we buy gifts for kids who have parents that are incarcerated. We got uh, Champions Kids Camp. We did a phenomenal amount for, for them the last two years during the pandemic. We've got a lot of good stuff that we've done. Native Americans will absolutely or have already benefited from the pumpkin patch. They had a job. They got to work. And we know maybe when it's all over, we'll have a little extra money too. But it really shouldn't be seen as I got to go out there and work so the church can give money. Is go out there and work so we can talk to the community, so we can let the community know we care, so that we can be a community resource. I cannot tell you the number of people that have come by there and said, thank God y'all are back. We missed you last year. This is an important thing for this community. If we didn't make a penny. It's a service. It does feel good to be treated nicely. Just like it feels good to have a little money. But we sure need to be careful that we don't let either one go to our head. That we don't start to think we're important. It's one of the big challenges I had when I became a preacher. You know, I love you guys. I really do. I love all of you guys. And, and, and we, you know, we don't have much staff at this church right now. But, uh, you know, when Christmas comes and, and things like that, I don't need nor, nor is it expected to get a gift. I would rather, in my honor, you give money to Bill Nash's Champions Kids Camp. Because I know preachers that demand they get new suits, new cars, new tires, and a lot of other stuff. Uh, and I'm not, they're, I'm not naming names or denominations. I just know that happens. Friends, if I, can, if I ever get to a place where I think you serve me, I need to leave. I serve, that's what they call it in the United Methodist Church. I serve the charge of Hope Community United Methodist Church. I serve. At the bishop's will. And you guys serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because you've been baptized and that's what you said you wanted to do. And so we are all servants. But sometimes we don't look at Jesus like a servant. Sometimes we look at him like he's, he's on this big pedestal. And, 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 and you know, I don't know what it means that he was a perfect human being. Uh, he was a... Uh, he was. We know that. He was 100% human, 100% God. I don't know if he was muscle bound. I don't know if he was short, tall, had a big nose. I don't have any idea. I'm pretty sure most of the pictures we have are wrong. I'm really sure he didn't have blue eyes. <laughs> or white skin. He probably didn't wear a white robe. But I mean white skin. Well, I don't know. But, but I, I think... We have this picture of him as some, it, just like we do everything that's religious, right? We, we can't, we can't, oh, we got to be careful. Can't write the Bible. Can't move the furniture. Y'all really lucked out this year because I forgot that it was World Communion Sunday. But I won't forget next year. And when we do, the altar where we serve communion from is going to be right smack in the middle of the room. And the chair is going to be in a circle. 
We have that privilege now. We can make things different. We don't have to do it the way it always was. In fact, the post-pandemic church better figure out how to do it moving forward or we'll get left behind. People have other stuff going on. And they don't know why they should come here. Unless you tell them. And how do you tell them? Well, you don't go point your finger and yell at them. Or we, even those members that we haven't seen for so long. <laughs> no, no, don't call them up and say, oh, we're missing you, but I'm afraid the building will fall down when you come back. That, that's the wrong thing to do. It's fine to call them and say, we miss you. But don't make them feel guilty or... Just make them feel welcome. Y'all know what guilty feels like, right? Yep. This sermon ought to make most of us feel a little bit that way. At some point, we wanted to be served. Sometimes we wanted a little prestige. I hear it all the time from people. Well, I retired. They didn't even give me a gold watch. You know, the problem with leaving, whether you're a preacher or leaving a job, usually about half the people there were glad you're going and about half the people are sad. And you really don't know which sad half it is. You know, just say goodbye, move on, and go do what you're going to do. Quit worrying, don't spend an inordinate amount of time worrying what people think about you. If your relationship is right with God, you're going to be fine. And if you're married, your relationship with your significant other, your spouse, it ought to be okay because you live with them. You promised to God that you would do that stuff. And if you got children, yeah, you have responsibility to your children. But none of them are supposed to serve you any more than you serve them. Parents serve their children, don't they? But I know parents that demand their children serve them. So I think there's a lot in this passage. And the best thing I could think of for this group to hear was there's a humility required when you're doing the right kind of service. So if it humbles you a little bit, you're probably doing the right thing. If you're feeling a little below who you usually are, or you think you are, you're probably doing the right thing. If it seems like it's a little bit of a menial task for how important you think you are, it's probably the right thing. God calls us. <coughs> he called Jesus to be humble and submit Himself. Now, I wasn't going to tell this story, but I'm going to tell it uh, because Harry asked me to. So the other day I had this opportunity to listen to Charlie Allen preach. Uh, if y'all don't know who that one is, he was the pastor of First Methodist, First Methodist Houston for 28 years, a long time ago. Um, there's a history between my family and Charles. My mom and dad were friends of his before and after he retired. So when it came up on my screen that I could listen to him for a few minutes, I decided I wanted to. And, and it brought back a lot of memories. I've heard many, 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 many sermons from Charles Allen. He was from Georgia, and it was funny because he lived in Texas a long time. It seemed like the longer he lived in Texas, the more Georgian his accent got. <laughs> but he started off, he said, yeah, he said, you know, he was preaching up in North Carolina somewhere. He said, I have a, have a house down on the Gulf Coast. He said, a man, a man built that house and gave it to me. And it's a beautiful house. He said, you know, I don't have too many rich friends, but I sure pray for the ones I have. <laughs> and he said, sometimes I sit at my desk and he said, I got one of those paperweights. He said, you've seen them. It's got a little round base and a little glass globe. If you shake it, it gets real cloudy. He said, this one that I have on my desk, it has a little man standing in it. And, and he said, sometimes when I'm on the phone or I'm studying, I'll reach down and I'll pick that paperweight up and I'll shake it. And I hold it in my hand and I say, little man, your world is really cloudy right now. But be still. I'll hold you right here in my hand. Be still. And your world will clear up in just a little bit. 
And he said, and then I realized I'm talking to myself. That even as I sit there holding that paperweight in my hand, God holds me in His hand. Amen. And if I'll just be still in God's hand, my world will clear up. I think that's a word for us to take with us as we go into this crazy, chaotic world. Little man, be still. And your world will get clear. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, so we, we hear God's word, we get challenged, we get convicted, we get moved forward and doing stuff, and then what do we do? We're going to fly away. As you're able, would you please stand as we sing today, I'll fly away. heaven surround us. We've got absolutely beautiful weather. God gave it to us. Let's go out and be grateful. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. Amen.